Well, I really never thought I would do it. It's been probably seven years since I have had this idea in my head of putting a YouTube channel together, and now my fear of never even having the opportunity to fail has now finally outweighed my fear of actual failure. So uh, I think this calls for a little celebratory dance. No, ma'am. I am quite sure that at the beginning of my journey, I'm going to have issues with my video, audio, lighting, bear with me, I'll get it fixed. Look, I even got this very fancy microphone. Welcome to my ASMR channel. And I know what you're thinking, what is the purpose of your YouTube channel? I'll give you a little hint. If you already know me, you might have already guessed anyway, but I think that you got the clue now. Space is what we will be discussing on my YouTube channel. And I am really excited about it because there's a lot of really awesome things going on in the space industry today. However, one of the other reasons I really wanted to start talking about this is because there's been a lot of scrutiny towards billionaires and their pissing contests to get to space. So on July 20th, uh, founder and CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, or some people lovingly refer to him, Jeff Bozo. <laughs> took his Shepard rocket ship that was constructed by Blue Origin into space, and it cost a lot of money. It was very expensive. And this got a lot of scrutiny from a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, it was in the media, there were all kinds of memes, um, some of them <laughs> rightfully so, some of them actually pretty freaking hilarious and others that just do, they didn't really sit with me quite right. Bruh. So here's the thing, um, you hear about all the crazy stuff that's happening in the world and people say, hey, there's no planet B. Why are we spending so much time and money on trying to get somewhere out there in space? With the world experiencing unprecedented disasters, droughts, wildfires, floods, ice melt, famine, poverty, global terrorism, political and social unrest, and so much more. Of course, we should focus on this planet. Of course we should. All right, let's unpack that. I grew up watching Star Trek and I really fell in love with the premise that not only could people work together globally, but they could work together as completely different species on different planets across the galaxy. I'll never forget that a Star Trek Next Generation episode where a few humans from almost 400 years in the past were removed and unfrozen from their cryonics chambers, and one of them demanded to speak to his lawyer because he thought for sure by now he'd be stinking rich as well in his time. That was sort of the main objective surrounding damn near everything. This is the 24th century. Material needs no longer exist. Then what's the challenge? The challenge, Mr. Offenhouse, is to improve yourself, to enrich yourself. Enjoy it. That quote for me when I watched that was just mwah, chef's kiss. In this episode, Captain Jean-Luc Picard declares that as a human species, we've eliminated hunger, want, the need for possessions. We've grown out of our infancy. You see, for me, Star Trek is a beloved sci-fi show that's an excellent example of how historically we know that the collaboration it takes to work together internationally on global projects breaks down this illusion of borders and instills a sense of we're all in this together. And if we can continue that collaboration into the future, we can continue to expand the support of innovative technological advancements and achievements that go a long way to finding solutions for the most difficult problems that afflict humanity and the planet. So let's rewind for a minute. Let's actually talk about our history. In 1969, we went to the moon. We enjoyed the space shuttle program until 2011 when it was ended. And when the space shuttle program was ended, we stagnated as a collaborative global planet. I want to go into that, but first I want to talk about why the space shuttle program ended in the first place. According to an article written by Newsweek, and you can find this all over the place, the proximate cause of the end of the shuttle program was the Columbia accident in 2003. NASA's chief historian Bill Berry told Newsweek, 
while it's easy to say the Columbia accident is what caused the end of the program, the reasons are actually pretty deep and they go back to the very beginning. And in the aftermath of Columbia, people realized that the vehicle was a lot more risky than generally thought. Most of the reasons for that were because of compromises made back in the 1970s when the shuttle was being designed due to cutbacks in the budget. But aside from the safety aspect, costs were also a major issue. When the program was retired, the three remaining shuttles were only about a third of the way through their flight lifetimes. And this is some bullshit! And as much of a shame as it was, simply put, the space shuttle program was just too expensive for its funding capabilities. As an example, in fiscal year 2019, the Defense Department and related activities accounted for roughly half of all discretionary spending, while NASA's funding made up exactly 0.5% of the total budget. I want to talk about what we have achieved because of the NASA Space Shuttle Program, because of going to the moon, because of all these collaborative, brilliant minds coming together over the sheer curiosity of what lies beyond our planet and exploring the unrelenting passion to understand more about our origins in the universe and what it really all means. First, it's greatly improved healthcare thanks to experiments in space. Satellites provide data on climate change, pollution, and natural disasters for improved emergency relief efforts. Uh, we have improved products for weather forecasting and global communications that we've never had before. We've created thousands more high-tech jobs, which include the need for women in the field. We have imaging sensors that monitor water quality. We now have inspired equipment that has improved breast cancer detection technology. We have improved vaccines. We have a better understanding of osteoporosis and bone loss and how to prevent it. We've inspired youth and adults alike to think on a global scale and become curious about space and the planet. We have numerous technologies that have been invented and improved through space exploration that have made life better today for many people, to include cell phone cameras, prosthetic limbs, LASIK surgery, portable computers, computer mice, baby formula, adjustable smoke detectors, freeze-dried food, memory foam, wireless headsets, the jaws of life, home insulation, ear thermometers, water purification systems, oil blankets, athletic shoes, landmine removal, LEDs, CAT scan technology, scratching systems, and so many more. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching this video. Here's a really cool liquid called ferrofluid. This liquid was invented by NASA in 1963. It's attracted to magnets and is mainly used in hard drives and similar rotating shaft motors or for dampening vibrations in loudspeakers, but most notably, it's used in magnetic resonance imaging or MRIs in hospitals. Freaking cool, right? The more you consider how much we advance as a society, as a civilization, as a globe, that we start to come together and shed this pettiness and xenophobia. And when that happens, really great things can be accomplished. I will never forget Carl Sagan's words as Voyager 1 got closer to the outskirts of our solar system. It took a photo of Earth. Voyager 1 and 2 were launched in 1977 with the mission to take advantage of a rare planetary alignment to study the outer solar system up close. Now, this planetary alignment is so rare that it takes place once every 175 years. And on Valentine's Day 1990, the human race collectively fell in love with our planet Earth when, as Voyager 1 reached the outskirts of our solar system just past Neptune, it was commanded to turn its camera around and take a photo of Earth. It was so far away, in fact, about 6 billion kilometers from the sun, that Earth was the size of a mere pixel in the photo, a dot in the image, hence a pale blue dot. A famous American astronomer, uh, creator of the original Cosmos TV show, Carl Sagan, fascinated as he always was about what lies beyond our tiny existence out there in the vast unknown, beautifully and articulately captured all the feelings conjured by this incredible photo op. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, 
every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on the mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Now let's briefly talk about what lies ahead in the space industry today and what has been going on. We talked briefly about how NASA was struggling because they didn't get enough funding for decades going into space has been incredibly expensive. There has recently been a major game changer that's happened within the rocket industry that's begun to allow cost to be far more suitable, and that's the development of fully reusable rockets. SpaceX, for example, is expected to significantly reduce the cost of access to space and change the competitive market in space launch services because of their fully reusable rockets, which fall back to Earth and then safely land themselves. After Elon Musk's successful first stage recovery in December 2015, he was quoted as saying, the potential cost reduction over the long term is probably in excess of a factor of 100. This means that we could really actually one day see normal private citizens purchasing tickets and making trips to space. Someday. Jeff Bezos' Blue Shepard rocket and Elon Musk's Falcon 9 rocket had been competing to win a contract with NASA to become the main launch vehicle to start pushing people into space, the moon, and eventually to Mars. But earlier this year, it was officially declared that a $2.9 billion contract would be rewarded to SpaceX to use its upcoming Starship to take astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface of the moon. The competitiveness between Elon Musk Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos is, is actually quite spectacular to watch. Certainly, without a doubt, Elon Musk is winning this space race. Elon Musk's plan to get to Mars is so even beyond what you can imagine. It's so incredibly cool, saying that he is highly confident that SpaceX will land humans on Mars by 2026. Um, he recently said that he thinks it's an achievable goal within about six years from now and added that SpaceX plans to send his Starship rocket, his reusable rocket, without crew in the next two years. Now I think that this is maybe a bit hubristic or at the very least overly optimistic, but hey, I mean, who knows? Look what he's accomplished so far. And I quite honestly really hope that these billionaires continue to compete with one another in the pursuit of space exploration. That's what this entire video is about. The technology we have received, the advancement we get through the collaboration of different cultures and societies working together towards something that they are just innately curious about launches us, no pun intended, into a place where we are higher beings. We are more advanced, more understanding, and I will never stop hoping for a world that looks more like Star Trek. Finally, when I say that the pursuit of space exploration is important to humanity, I'm not just talking about how it'll help to push us into creating smart, high-tech, green, and eco-friendly cities with sustainable and disaster-proof architecture, with advanced public transport, water systems, and renewable energy sources. I'm not just talking about how we'll be able to better sustain the growing world population and clean up pollution and control global warming and waste. And I'm not just talking about how we can even someday hope to eradicate famine, poverty, and inhumane crime. I'm also talking about the importance of becoming a multi-planetary system where the human species can prolificate, expand, and create new worlds within the solar system and perhaps even one day into interstellar space. We owe it to ourselves as an evolving humanity to venture out into the vast unknown, to advance our species, and let's face it, Earth and our sun are not going to be around forever. Maybe we never make it that long to see those events, but who are we to say what the future holds? Understanding new worlds helps us to understand ours better, and there's just no denying the benefit in that. And that's why we need to continue to venture out into space, and why we can find our future when we look up at the stars.
Guys, I just finished editing my video and I really hope that you liked it or at least aspects of it. I'm trying to reach a broader demographic of people who may or may not know about all the really cool things that are going on in the space industry now and in the near future. I had a lot of topics I wanted to cover in this video, but I realized that it was getting way too long and I am ashamed to admit how long it took me to edit this video. So I won't, but suffice it to say, I was learning how to edit from the beginning, so I ran into all kinds of obstacles with lighting and audio and stock footage that wouldn't be a copyright issue and things like that, and I am still learning. But this video is just supposed to serve as an, an intro to my channel, so if you did like it, I would, of course, really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed you know the deal. And it would help even more if you commented in the comment section what you liked and what you would like to see in the future. And I will be sure to get out a new video with something interesting as soon as I can. But in the meantime, I'll see you later and keep looking up.